So our next topic is going to be on what the heck is Savage Mesh? I always ask this question as at last year. I always ask this question in the same phrase. What the heck is Savage Mesh? Because like there's so much meshing going around and I don't know what it's all about. This session is going to be taken by Jibril Oyetunji. And Jibril is a self-taught developer and DevOps engineer interested in all things cloud, containers, and the Go programming language. It's good to have you here, Jibril. Oh, hi. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, OK, cool. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Jibril. And I'm really excited to be presenting this uh, session called What the Heck is a Service Mesh? So hopefully, we can explore this together and get some insights by the end of this talk. So yeah. Uh, a little about me, uh, I'm currently a software engineer working at Arcunox. Uh Really love the Go programming language, hence uh, I sometimes call myself a gopher. In my second year of university, pursuing a degree in cybersecurity, and you can also find me on Twitter at Syntax Era. So yeah, service mesh, what's that? Uh, so. When you Google this, you probably land on Wikipedia, and Wikipedia will tell you uh, a service mesh is a dedicated infrastructure layer for facilitating service-to-service -service communications between microservices microservice using a proxy. But what does that really mean? Uh, when I first started out, that didn't really tell me much, and I was still as confused. So a simpler definition would be a service mesh is a tool for adding a layer of observability and security between your applications without the need to modify your existing services. And I would explain a bit more about this later in the slides. Uh, so some popular service meshes you might have heard of are Istio, Linkerd, and Console. So yeah, now that we have a good idea of what a service mesh is, how does this work? And it turns out that the answer is pretty simple. The answer is a sidecar. Well, not this kind of sidecar, but service meshes use something called the sidecar pattern. So the sidecar essentially sits alongside your application and intercepts requests to and from your application. And this allows the service mesh to provide the extra features of security, observability, and whatever other features the service mesh might choose to provide. And this is also how you are able to modify your service mesh without actually having to modify any application code. So uh, this is a typical example of how it would look in a Kubernetes cluster, where there is a cycle sitting alongside service A, B, and C. So any rules or updates I make to the service mesh would be made to the sidecar proxy running alongside your service and not the application itself. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool, but why? Uh, the, fir the first one is security. Uh, most modern service meshes would allow you to fine tune what, service, what services are allowed to communicate with each other. Uh, off the top of my head, one that I really like is console. And console has something called intentions. So intentions basically allow you to def uh, define what services can communicate with each other. So going back to the previous slide where there was service A, B, and C, let's I could define a rule that says only service A is allowed to talk to service B, and only service C, only service B is allowed to talk to service C. So you can start to see how you can fine tune how what services are allowed to talk to each other and thereby giving you an added layer of security. And also another big one is uh, neutral TLS, which basically encrypts the communication between services and helps you get, gain yet another layer of security on top of your applications. And cool dashboards. Most service meshes would provide this and it's I find it really attractive, but not really. By dashboards, I mean observability. So 
most service meshes or all service meshes would give you uh, the give you observability features. This would allow you to drill into each service running in your cluster or however you choose to deploy. And then it will allow you to see things like latency, uh, re failed requests. The screenshot I have here is from Istio, and this is the Kiali dashboard, whereby they have some services deployed here, and then you can see what services are talking to each other and how they are communicating. And then they also have some stuff about uh, requests per second and then some other metrics you can really drill into. Uh, one of the cooler features, aside the dashboards, of course, is traffic management. And this allows you to do things like A-B testing, uh, blue-green deployments, and canary deployments. Well, I can tell you that we're doing any of these three on their own can be a bit of a pain, and then a service mesh can help you make it just a little bit more easier. So that's another big reason uh, I see some people using a service mesh. Uh, so the other question, should you be using a service mesh? Well, yes, but actually no. And the answer is it actually depends. Uh, in a world of microservices and cloud native buzzwords, it's easy to think that a service mesh might be the next logical step for your applications, uh, whether they're microservice or not. But beware, as Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility. And you should really watch out. When thinking of using a service mesh, responsibility comes in form of operational cost and this goes back to your team. Like, are they actually ready to bear the burden of running a service mesh? I mean, depending on how experienced they are, this might not be a problem, but adding any new technology or tech, and even if it's not that new, adding a technology in general could, co could come with unforeseen circumstances. So you should really ask yourself, would your current application benefit from a service mesh? If the answer is no, I don't think you should be trying to use a service mesh. And again, is your team ready to handle what, all that comes with a service mesh? Above all, remember a service mesh is not a silver bullet and have fun. So thank you very much. That's all for my presentation. That was a great section. Thank you so much, Jibril, for that very introductory um, topic on um, what the heck is Service Mesh. So if you have any questions for our speaker, you can drop that in the chat and um, we'll interact with it while we still have a speaker right here with us. Actually, I think one thing I like about uh, Jibril's talk is the title. I mean, like, what the heck is uh, service mesh? And, and that kind of like resonates with everyone that is curious about like the topic. Um, it was super, super catchy. And I think you really did justice to to introducing what is service mesh. Uh, but I, I understand a lot of folks must have some questions. Um, so I'm currently on Twitter to know if there are any questions um, from what I can see, there is none. Okay. okay. So, so yeah, um, I guess that's it. Um, Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, thank you so much, um, Jubril. Yeah, thanks. For, thanks for having me. Yeah, for this awesome presentation. Uh, um, and yeah, uh, I hope you you join us uh, next year because definitely this will be happening next year as well. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having you join as a speaker or as an organizer, you know, next year. All right, uh, thank you so much.
Bye. Also. Bye.